Hi, I am Dr. Salvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clusip rotation and for surgical trainees as well. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. So in this episode, I am going to discuss one more mind map on testicular carcinoma which is a scrotal swelling. So I told in all other, uh, I mean the uh, videos also, the causes for scrotal swellings can be divided broadly into the acute painful condition and chronic painless conditions. The acute painful conditions are tarsal testis, acute epididyma orchitis, and tarsal of testicular appendages. The chronic painless conditions are hydrocele, epididymal cysts, spermatocele, and varicocele, which are cystic swellings, whereas the solid swellings consist of chronic epididyma orchitis and the testicular tumor, or this is the testicular carcinoma. So coming to this diagnostic algorithm, one is when the uh, upper limit is not palpable. That means the uh, get above the swelling is not possible. That means this is not a scrotal swelling. This is an inguinal scrotal swelling. I am not going to discuss this one. Already I have discussed. So our patient is a scrotal swelling patient. Okay. Even if there is scrotal swelling, you have to look for whether the testis and epididymis are palpable or not palpable. So in testicular carcinoma, usually the testis and epididymis is palpable. And whether it is opaque or translucent, definitely it is opaque because there is no fluid surrounding it. So if it is opaque and whether it is tender or not tender, usually it is not tender. So in not tender category, there are so many other things also there. One is the tumor, testicular tumor, or it could be a gamma or even chronic hematocele. These are the differential diagnosis for this category. I'm not going to discuss the other, other things here. So this is the most important thing, the mind map for testicular carcinoma. The first thing is the risk factors. Which patients are more prone to develop testicular carcinoma? Those who are having cryptarchidism or undescended testis, those who are having family history of already having testicular cancer, those who are having contralateral carcinoma of the testis already treated, now they have more risk to develop the cancer in the other testis also. And those who are suffering from Klinefelter syndrome, all these are risk factors to develop testicular carcinoma. Coming to the clinical features, Usually, these patients will have painless, progressively increasing mass. There may be um, heavy testicles. That means the swelling will be very heavy. And para-iotic lymph nodes may be palpable. And even the virtuous node or the left supraclavicular node. And some of the cases may have lax secondary hydrocele. Because of the testicular carcinoma, hydrocele or presence of fluid is there, but it is not massive, only minimal amount of fluid will be there, which is called secondary hydrocele. Coming to the classification for testicular carcinoma, this is very important. So majority of them are germ cell tumors. Germ cell tumors <coughs> are divided into seminoma germ, germ cell tumors, non-seminomatous germ cell tumors. In seminomatous germ cell tumors, there is only one uh, lesion, that is seminoma. In non-seminomatous germ cell tumors, there are four pathologies, embryonal carcinoma, teratoma, yolk sac tumor or endodermal sinus tumor, and choreal carcinoma. And the other variety, apart from the germ cell tumor, it is gonadal stromal tumor, which consists of 
Leydig cell tumor and Sertoli tumor, which will be both having, uh, each one will be having masculinizing and feminizing effect because of male and female hormones. And another one is non-specific non -specific stromal tumors like lymphoma or secondary meds in the testis. Coming to the workup or investigation, the patient should do what is called testicular self-examination. Like a patient with breast carcinoma where they are doing breast self-examination, those patients who are having testicular carcinoma should examine their own testis and this is what is called testicular self-examination. You can also do ultrasound of the scrotum. You can pick up the tumor and you can do the tumor marker that is AFP, HCG and LDH. All the three tumor markers you must do. You can do CT and MRI also of both abdomen and pelvis to rule out any uh, lymph nodal enlargement. And then you can do biopsy but biopsy should not be done through the scrotal skin only when you are doing the radical excision of the testis that is the high orchidectomy you can you can subject that the whole specimen to the um, uh, pathologist or you can do what is called chi vasu maneuver where you have to take a small bit of tissue for biopsy send it for frozen section and you will be knowing the uh, result within 10 to 15 minutes whether the testis has got I mean malignant swelling or it's a benign condition. If it is a benign one, you just don't do anything, put the testis back into the scrotum. Otherwise, if it is a malignant one, okay, go ahead and do radical high orchidectomy, that is inguinal orchidectomy. Coming to the staging, so it is four stage. Stage one, the tumor is confined to the testis. Stage two, what it is extra testicular, but in, only infradiaphragmatic lymph nodes are palpable. In stage 3, even the supradiaphragmatic lymph nodes are palpable. Stage 4, there is distant metastasis to distant organs like bone and etc. Coming to the treatment, the surgical treatment is the radical high inguinal orchidectomy. That is what you have to do, surgery. But in seminomatous germ cell tumors, and if it is a early stage, then you can do this radical high inguinal orchidectomy plus you can, you can give radiotherapy, deep x-ray therapy because seminoma is radiosensitive. Whereas in case of late seminomatous germ cell tumors, here also you can do radical orchidectomy plus you have to give combination chemotherapy. Yeah, this you have to do. If it is early non-cell, non-seminomatous germ cell tumors, then here also you can do radical orchidectomy. But this non-seminomatous germ cell tumors are not radiosensitive. You have to do what is called retroperitoneal lymph node dissection because the tumor will spread into the retroperitoneal lymph nodes or the paraiotic lymph nodes. So these lymph nodes should be removed if it is an early case. Suppose if it is a late non seminomatous germ cell tumors, then you can do orchidectomy, but you have to give combination chemotherapy. The uh, three drugs you can use, that is etoposide, bleomycin, and cisplastin. That is the drug of combination for the testicular tumor. So this is the WHO classification for the testicular carcinoma, it is germ cell tumor and then the non-germ cell uh, gonadal stromal tumors and then non-specific stromal tumors. In germ cell tumors, consists of 90%, seminoma is 48%, non-seminoma is 42%, which consists of teratoma, embryonal carcinoma, yolk, cell, yolk sac tumor or endodermal sinus tumor, and choriocarcinoma mainly. The, <coughs> the gonadal storm cell tumors consists of Leydig cell tumor and Sertoli cell tumor and mixer tumor also. The non-specific stromal tumors consists of the lymphoma and the secondaries in the testis. 
coming to the treatment algorithm for testicular carcinoma this is treatment for seminomatous germ cell tumors so this depends on the stage of the disease okay suppose this is stage 1 okay uh, low risk and high risk just if it is low risk just surveillance follow up only if it is high risk patient but stage 1 okay you can <coughs> you can give just uh, carboplastin that is a drug you can give for 7 cycles and surveillance only follow up if it is stage 2a then here also you can give uh, chemotherapy but uh, everywhere you have to do a radical architectomy and then you can give radiotherapy also because these seminomas are radiosensitive so you can give radiotherapy if it is stage 2a apart from that if it is a uh, if it is a stage 3b then you have to give combination chemotherapy that is bleomycin etoposide and cisplastin three to four cycles you have to give this is what you have to do suppose it is a non seminomatous tumor how to treat them so this is not radio sensitive so you should not give radiotherapy but instead if it is a early case everywhere you have to do a radical i mean high architectomy okay apart from that in early case in case of um, non seminomatous germ cell tumors you can do what is called uh, retroperitoneal lymph node dissection because there is no role for um, radiotherapy here. And if it is a late case, okay, better to give the radiotherapy in combination. That is the same drug, bleo, bleomycin, etoposide, and cisplastin. You can give this one, okay, yeah, but retroperitoneal uh, resection should be done only if the lesion is more than one centimeter. Then only you have to do it, okay. What is the difference between seminoma and non-seminoma? <coughs> seminoma is the most common, whereas non-seminoma is less common. Elevated AFP levels present only in non-seminoma and not in seminoma. Elevated BCG also is common in non-seminoma, but not rare in seminoma. Radical inguinal architectomy should be done in both the cases. Radiation therapy is sensitive only in seminoma but not in non-seminoma. Chemotherapy you have to give for both the cases, especially in late stages. You have to give combination chemotherapy for both seminoma and non-seminoma. Retroperitoneal lymph node dissection you have to do only in non-seminomatous tumor and not in the seminoma. So this is the diagnostic uh, tabular column. This you can use as a ready reckoner to clinch the correct diagnosis. So this is the column where I have given all the differential diagnosis of the scrotal swelling, namely hydrocele, epididymal cyst, spermatocele, varicocele, testicular tarsen, epididymal arcaitis, and testicular carcinoma. Suppose if you want to uh, rule out testicular carcinoma from hydrocele, so if you want to know what is the ETO pathogenesis of hydrocele, you have to read this column because hydrocele could be primary, that is idiopathic, or it could be secondary because of some underlying pathology. Whereas testicular carcinoma, the common risk factors are undescended testis, Kienfelter syndrome, or the germ cell tumors are called seminoma and non-seminoma or non-germ cell tumors. This is the classification. So like that, what are the symptomatology? What is the What are the signs? What are the investigations you have to do? What is the treatment? Everything is there in this tabular column. You have to compare and contrast the findings. And then you have to do what is called the vertical reading to clinch the correct diagnosis. So you have to consider all the possibilities and you should know how to differentiate one condition. That is the commonest scrotal swelling is hydrocele. How to differentiate the testicular carcinoma from the hydrocele, you must know. This is what is called clinical reasoning. That is the most important skill you have to develop during your clinical surgery posting. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think 
that these videos are very useful. Kindly like this uh, video and share this in your social media. Also click the bell button to get notified regarding my latest uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an yet another episode. Until then, bye-bye.